Celeriac is over-seasoned. Give me more sauce. Take away the parsley. Lose the gel. The dish is all over the place. It doesn't work as a plate of food. I've given myself quite a lot to do in an hour. So I have to be quick and focused on what it is I'm doing. I'm going to be scrutinised hard for that shocking skills round. So uh, I just hope I can pull it back. What is your dish? It's my interpretation of uh, a Goan monkfish curry. Have you visited Goa? Never. I wish I had a romantic story to back it up, but I don't. So it's a, it's a Goan crab curry? Got a monkfish tail. I'm doing like a crab pakora, a deconstructed sagalu. It's going to be much more refined than your rice and sauce. Slightly unusual for a, a chef from Carlisle to be doing <laughs> the food of southern India. Is this what you train to cook? It's not what I train to cook, it's what I was interested in cooking, so I was classically trained. A dish like this has got to be all about great balance, good flavour, being able to taste the monkfish, the crab. I'm excited and concerned, but looking forward to it, nonetheless. Okay. Simon is using monkfish for his curry, which is a great fish to use, but he's got to make sure that he trims it properly. Monkfish has layers of skin that you've got to remove because if you leave all that on, it's going to tighten up and become quite tough. When you start deconstructing curries, I have a huge concern. Curries are best left alone, in my opinion, and I would prefer to see it classically presented rather than trying to show off by deconstructing the dish itself. Chefs, you have just 20 minutes remaining. People supporting me doing this is my family, obviously, because I think they're super excited to see me on TV. Hi, Mum. <laughs> yeah, it'd just be nice to make my, my parents and my brother proud. Max, what is your dish? So I'm doing a surf and turf dish. I'm doing a seared turbot, glazed pig cheeks. I've done a little broad bean pesto. Sauce is going to be the cider jus from the pig cheeks. Why a surf and turf, Maxime? I, I... I'd like it to be creative without being completely out there. I like making food that people enjoy. I don't like it if I make something that no one enjoys. Like fish and pig cheek? Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> There's a broad bean pesto, which I think is bringing freshness and lightness to this dish. The potatoes covered in a sauce with the sharpness of the capers and lemon zest, it, it sounds wonderful. When you're cooking down pig's cheek, you don't want to do it too fast because it dries out the meat. Any fish can be overcooked, but turbot can take just that little bit longer. Undercooked slightly, and it can be a little bit on the tough side. You have two minutes. Just two minutes. Perfect. Just last minute. 60 seconds. Very last touches. Chefs, your time is up. Stop. First up is Giannina, who has made roasted lamb rump with crispy liver and heart bonbon, palm anna potatoes, pickled courgettes, asparagus, and wild garlic pesto, finished with a lamb sauce. Loved the wild garlic pesto. I thought it brought a lovely freshness to the dish. I really enjoyed the light pickling of the courgette. The sauce is very, very well made. The mistake you've got with this dish is the lamb is on the tough side and it's slightly undercooked. The lamb that I had was wonderful. Cooked pink, crispy and a golden brown on the outside. The bonbon I was really looking forward to, but I would have liked more of the offal to come through in, in the bonbon. I find it a perfectly delightful and delicious dish. I love that almost sweet lamb with your sauces sticky and rich and salty. I also love the sweet pickling you've got in the cool jets that have still got a little crunch there. I'm very, very happy with that. Oh, I'm feeling very <laughs> relieved. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> 
I think I hit my targets and I deliver a full of flavor plate of this. William has made roast partridge breast and confit leg with figs, cherries, grapes, braised cabbage and bacon, fondant potatoes, a fig and cherry puree, and an orange flavored partridge sauce. The smoked bacon here is a, is a little tough. Apart from that, I think your dish is wonderful. Absolutely lovely. I was concerned by all the fruit. Even though you've used many fruits, you haven't put a lot on. So a piece of beautifully cooked partridge with a bit of salty bacon and then a nice sweet grape is lovely. A sweet sticky fig with a partridge is absolutely lovely. William, I like the way the partridge has been cooked. It's still pink, it's not dried out. This sauce is not the smack in your face orange that I thought it would be. It pairs very well with the sweetness of the fruit that you have here. So I think it's a very clever plate of food. I really did not think this dish was going to work at all. But you've got some really good flavors on here. You've got some fabulous cookery. If that's the amount of fruit you use on a savory dish, I can't wait to see you do a dessert. <laughs> I'm like over the moon. Oh, I'm so I'm so chuffed. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm in the clouds right now. John has served beef sirloin and braised short rib with a salt baked celeriac, celeriac puree, shallots cooked in sherry vinegar, a sherry vinegar fluid gel, and a Madeira jus. The sirloin steak is nicely cooked. You've cooked it in a water bath. So it's always going to be nice and pink in the middle. I really like the braised short rib, but I don't think this is the best way to serve it. I would have preferred bigger pieces of it. Celeriac puree for me is very watery. The fluid gel is there. It's only a dot I got to try, but it's super sharp. So I'm kind of glad that's all I got. The celeriac is over seasoned. Give me more sauce. Take away the parsley. Lose the gel. The dish is all over the place. It doesn't work as a plate of food. It is bitty, but there are things on here I really like. That steak cooked in the water bath, and that short rib, and the Madeira, and that little gel, I think are really good. Really, really good. But you've only got three dots. Those three dots aren't going to last the whole plate. Didn't go too well. You only get one shot, so, yeah. It's pretty gutted. Finally, it's Maxim, who has made lemon glazed turbot with cider braised pig cheek, a broad bean pesto, Jersey royal potatoes rolled in lemon caper sauce, finished with a cider and pork reduction. I think the pork cheek is the star of the plate. It melts in the mouth. The turbot, perfectly cooked. And I love the way you've dressed the plate. I think the presentation is fantastic. You've got off to a very, very good start. Thank you. It is your second excellent plate of food today. The pork cheek is divine, just falling apart and beautifully glazed. The freshness of the broad bean pesto for me is nice compared to the richness of this pork cheek. It's an excellent balance. It tastes fantastic. That pork cheek is unctuous and it's sticky and it's matching the stickiness of the sauce you've got under here that's got a sweetness. Why we've got a lump of turbot on there, I have absolutely no idea. As well as your turbot is cooked, I think surf and turf is an abomination <laughs> and should just be wiped from the face of the earth. It's a beautiful pork dish and there is a piece of turbot on there that is cooked brilliantly. Me, personally, I don't want to combine those two. I wasn't sure how it went at all, so as soon as they started being happy with it, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> way off.